Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Abby, and in today's video, I will be talking to you, or discussing rather, something that has been on my mind for the past few months, and that is self-righteous Christians. Now, if you're interested in this topic and you want to hear my thoughts and you also want to engage in the comments, then please keep watching. And without further ado, let's get right into it. So Cambridge.org says that a self-righteous person or self-righteousness is when a person believes that their ideas and their behavior are morally better than others. So basically they have never done any kind of wrong in their life and everybody else has. I'm pretty sure we've all met a self-righteous person or two, and we ourselves have probably displayed self-righteous behaviors. If you say that you've never ever displayed some sort of self-righteousness in your entire life, sis, brother, you're lying. Let's get real here. We have all displayed some form of self-righteousness or another. The problem is when a person is displaying those behaviors and they're not aware of it or they are aware of it and they think that I'm still right. So today I'm going to talk about self-righteousness within the Christian community. So self-righteous behavior among Christians can and unfortunately will alienate and deter others from even wanting to engage with the church community. And that can be very detrimental to someone who is not saved and looking to come to church and, you know, try and find God. That's also detrimental to the person themselves who is being self-righteous. And it can just cause a lot of drama and a lot of rifts and a whole lot of negativity within the church body that it does not need. So today I'm going to be talking about some of those behaviors that can cause that effect on the body of Christ. Number one, judgmental attitude. Now I know we've all come across one or two people or a host of people that have a judgmental attitude. It's almost as if they live their life to judge other people. They're never wrong. Everybody else is wrong. They're always right. Whatever they say goes. However they say it, that's the way that whatever it is, is supposed to be. I have encountered such people before, and let me tell you, they are very annoying, they're very draining, and you just don't want to be around people like that. Unfortunately, within the church community, there are a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of judgmental people, and there are a lot of hypocritical people. Now, growing up, I used to always hear the saying that church people are the most hypocrite set of people. <laughs> I can't say that I disagree. I honestly, and this is coming from someone that's a Christian and attends church. I can't say that I disagree because you will find the most judgmental people within the church. And I'm trying to figure out why, like, what is the reasoning for a lot of these people thinking that they can just dish out judgment to other people and think that's okay. And this is when I learned about self-righteousness. It's because they think that they're, again, morally better than other people and that somehow it gives them a right just because they're a Christian, just because they probably have a relationship with God. They think it's okay to just go around judging other people. That's not it. The Bible did say, judge not lest ye be judged. I think that verse gets misrepresented a lot. I think a lot of people use that verse a lot of times to fit their narrative and to fit their storyline, to fit their life. Um, especially if they know they're doing something they're not supposed to do, then it's, oh, only God can judge me. You're darn right, he will. As a Christian, let's say you encounter someone that's not saved. And maybe in the back of their heads, they're thinking, okay, you know what? I want to change my lifestyle. I want to be better. I want to go to church. I want to build a relationship with God. I want to turn my life around. But let's say you're at church and someone walks in and they have no idea what the church is about. And they walk in with, I don't know, maybe some shorts and a tank top. And instead of welcoming the person with open arms and just, you know, letting them know, hey, I'm proud of you. You made it to church. Instead, you're giving them dirty looks. You're talking down to them. You're being condescending. You're talking about them behind their back. And you're just making them feel uncomfortable for just being in the church. How do you think that would make that person feel? 
Because if I were to be that person and I came into the church thinking, oh, well, this is the place where they say they embrace everybody and, you know, God loves everyone and come as you are, the whole shebang. But yet I walk into the church and then people are giving me dirty looks. They're looking down on me all the... I wouldn't come back. Because now I'm thinking... If I'm already getting that judgment outside and the church is a place where I'm supposed to go, where I won't get that judgment, but here I am getting it. What makes you think that that person will want to come back? Then they would rather just be out there in the world and get judged out there anyways, than coming into the church and you're doing even worse than what the people outside are doing. Do you see what I'm saying? So let's try and not judge people. Let's try and embrace people, give people the benefit of the doubt. Let's, and matter of fact, if someone comes into the church with shorts and a tank top, just let them come in. And the more they grow in their faith, the more you embrace them, you show them love and you show them, hey, you're welcome here. Then later on, you know, you can talk to them and be like, okay, well, maybe not wear like something that's revealing or something of that manner but you know like this is how you know we dress or whatever the case it is but don't shun people don't judge them you know especially without even giving them a chance and listen i know some people are like well i never judge people we've all judged people before we've all been judged before but the main thing is become self-aware and fix what's not right the next point that I want to talk about kind of piggybacks off the first one, and that is hypocrisy. My goodness. Um, <laughs> again, I've encountered people that preach about God. They talk about God. They're the most upstanding Christian citizen. They are closer to God than everybody else. Their prayer life is better. Yet in the real world, their behavior, their mannerisms does not depict that of a Christ-centered person. And I can't be the only one who's encountered people like that. Now that screams insincerity because how can you be out here preaching to other people, telling them, oh, you're supposed to live that way. This is how God wants us to live. This is what you're supposed to be doing in order to live a life that's pleasing to God. Yet, yet you're outside doing the complete opposite of what you're preaching. It's hypocrisy, plain and simple. So if you know that you're out here preaching to people, judging people and telling them, oh, you're not supposed to be doing that. You're not supposed to be doing this. And you know for a fact that you're doing even worse than what they're doing. What are you doing? What, what are you doing? Again, please check yourself before you wreck yourself and wreck others in the process. Now, this point is one of my favorites, and that is exclusivity within the Christian community. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been to a few churches, and I can guarantee you every single one of them have cliques. Now, <laughs> it's almost as if it's some sort of superior club where they gatekeep their faith, or they... I just, I don't understand it. I don't understand why... You're gatekeeping your faith when Christ calls for us to be disciples out there, when you're supposed to be out there sharing the good news, encouraging people to come to God. Yet when people do come to God, you're shunning, you're shunning them or you're shutting them out because they're little cliques within the church. That shouldn't be. We should all come in together. We should all fellowship together. We should all, you know, embrace each other, encourage each other, uplift each other, love each other. But instead you have people within those cliques that are mocking others or shaming others or doing whatever else that they're doing. And it's just not right. Jesus was a man that embraced every single person, whether you were a sinner, whether you were a righteous person. So I'm not understanding within the body of Christ how you have church people, Christians, that are out here shunning other people, that are looking down their noses at others and being condescending. And it just doesn't make sense. So if you're one of those people, please, I am begging you. Again, check yourself before you wreck yourself because that kind of behavior, I can guarantee you, is not going to get you into heaven. It's just not. And while you're busy judging other people, God is here judging you. But anyways, this whole exclusivity within you know the body of christ it needs to stop stop excluding people stop making people feel like they don't belong that is not the reason why christ called us to be disciples it's not to exclude people but to include everybody 
The next point that I want to discuss is political advocacy. I truly, truly believe that faith and politics should not mix at all. The two are separate entities. They should not be muddling together in any way, shape or form. But unfortunately, there are some Christians that are heavily involved in politics and i'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that but when you start to muddle the two together that you don't know where one begins and one ends that's when we have problems because now you're shunning people who may not be in favor of the same political party that you're in favor of and now you start shunning them you start ostracizing them and that's not okay everyone has a right to be in favor of whatever political party they want to be and everyone has different viewpoints. Not everyone is going to see eye to eye on everything. And a lot of Christians, they feel like just because they said it, then it's law. Then this is what it is. You're not supposed to have a deferring view. You're not supposed to question anything. And I just do not agree with that. I feel like everyone has the right to have a deferring viewpoint. Another reason for self-righteousness is aggressive discipleship. And when I say aggressive discipleship is when you have some Christians, they want to forcefully push their viewpoint onto another person. Yes, Christ has called us to be disciples, but you have to know how to go about doing that. You cannot push your beliefs onto others in an intrusive and disrespectful manner. That defeats the whole purpose of discipleship. Don't do that. You talk to people and talk to them like the human beings that they are. You don't talk down to them. You know, you hear their viewpoints, you share yours, you let them ask questions and you answer it in the best way possible that you know how. Instead of trying to shove things down people's throats and tell them, oh, well, if you don't do this, you're wrong. And if you don't, don't do that. Please don't do that. Be gentle, be kind to people. Leave the aggressiveness for, I don't know, the sporting range or something but not with your fellow human beings. Lack of empathy. Now, when you lack empathy within the Christian body, you can come off and create an image of coldness and indifference, and it causes you to fail to empathize towards others and to actually listen to whatever it is they may be going through or whatever it is that they're trying to tell you. So please, please empathize with your fellow human beings. You never know. Maybe one day you'll be in that shoe that they're in. But you know, there are some Christians that think that they're above anything happening to them. And again, for the life of me, I don't know why, but again, self-righteousness. But just show empathy, show love, show gracefulness to other human beings because we all need grace. We all need empathy. We all need love. We all need people that will actually listen to us and not just hear what the person is saying and then it's in one ear out the no please just show a little empathy it goes a long way and you never know what that empathy will do for someone else now this next point <laughs> it grates my nerve when i see people displaying it especially christians and that is a superiority complex where you think that you have all the answers you know everything you're closer to god than everybody else your prayer life is better than everybody else you can pray better than everybody else your walk with god is stronger than everybody else and that can cause resentment and it can cause distance within you know the body of christ because I feel like some people fail to remember that they once were in need of Jesus. They once were in need of the Savior. And just because they found Jesus and they built a relationship with God and, you know, maybe they improve their walk with God every day, they think that they're up here and everybody else is down here. No one is inferior to another person. No one is superior to another person. So just because you're a little bit further along in your walk with God, and someone else may just be starting or maybe they're still fairly new and they're still learning. It does not give you the right to think that you're better than them and that God loves you more than them because he don't. He loves every single one of us equally, sinner or not. It just, it really grates my nerve when people think that, oh, well, I read the Bible three times a day, so I know it better than you. And that means I'm a better Christian than you. And that means I'm living a better life than you. No, 
Anybody can read the Bible. Anybody can quote from the Bible. That doesn't mean that your life is reflecting what you're reading. And I have encountered Christians who, because they know the Bible or they've read it from cover to cover, they think that they know better than others. And if someone comes with maybe a deferring viewpoint or if they ask a question about something, they look down on the person and it's like, well, I know it, so I'm better. Meanwhile, in their real life, they're not doing a thing that the Bible says that you should be doing. They're not adhering to anything in the Bible. And basically what they do is they flip scripture again to fit the narrative that they're living. Let's stop this, please. So I'm going to end this video here before it gets too long. And I truly hope that you guys enjoyed the video and that you understood like the points that I was making. If you know a self-righteous Christian, maybe you can share the video with them and say, hey, I've noticed some of these things in you. Maybe it's time that you take a step back, you know, seek God's face, ask for forgiveness and try your best to change. Now, I know we're not perfect and we all make mistakes and we'll continue to make mistakes. But the problem lies when people are making mistakes and instead of becoming self-aware of those mistakes and trying to change and become better, they brush over it and say, oh, well, well, God will forgive me. Well, God will judge me. And no, no. When you know better, you do better. And if we're having these types of behaviors within the church community, it can make the church seem unwelcoming and unkind. And, you know, this exclusive club that only certain people can get into. And that is the last thing that Christ wanted. So let's try and do better. Let's be more self-aware of our behaviors and especially ones that would push people away from wanting to know God because we want everyone to build that relationship with him. We want everyone to know God and, you know, just to just to be able to be in his presence and just have him on the main line, so to speak. But I truly hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments if you agree with my points, if you've encountered self-righteous Christians, if you go to church, if you don't, what caused you not to, etc., etc. Thank you so much. I love you guys, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!